In this video, I wrestle with forces I've never come across before, draw blood, and eventually end up with a design that is simple and has one extra benefit I did not expect. This is by far the biggest thing I have ever designed and built. Hope you enjoy this. You know, it's usually those little things, the mildly annoying things that end up draining you of energy. If they were truly bad, you'd have to stop and deal with them, but instead they nag at you day in and day out. One of these for me is laundry. It evolves many steps and contraptions and I find myself dragged into this on a regular basis. Let me quickly show you why this is a problem. Once the clothes are out of the machine, the ordeal begins. I have to pull out the drying rack, assemble it, carefully place clothes onto this thing, taking into account that the slots are way too close and the whole thing is way too flimsy. In fact, it fell many times. After all of that, this monstrosity has to sit somewhere inconveniently in the the flat, inevitably an obstacle and an eyesore. And then, after a couple of days, the great adventure continues. I have to fold the clothes, transport them, arrange them in drawers and disassemble the device for storage. During a normal week, everything gets really messy really fast. The drawers themselves, but also the garments, which now require some extra steps in the form of hanging and steaming. It's a nightmare that repeats itself like clockwork. But what if I optimize for fewer steps? What if my dryer becomes my storage solution? Now we're cooking. I had a fairly good mental image of what I wanted to achieve here. First, I wanted to retain the drying rack configuration, but perfect it for better drying. Second, I wanted it to be a structure that is self-contained and space efficient once the drying is over. Third, I wanted to combine 3D printing with other materials like wood to allow this to integrate better with the rest of my room a true one-of-a-kind piece of semi-permanent furniture with a few tricks up its sleeve. I had some experience buying aluminum rods, which in this case will provide us with two distinct advantages which I'll show you later. But when it comes to wood, I just hope for the best and I try to stick within budget. While the orders were on their way, I started on the CAD modeling. Foolishly, I thought this was going to be a really quick job, but it descended into a huge set of tasks. Multiple parts, multiple assemblies, multiple variants. I wanted not only to make sure it all fits together, but also that the motion is smooth and most importantly that it actually works well for the intended purpose. You can't validate this just from behind the screen. You have to get your hands dirty and that's exactly what I did. I had to print multiple versions of various sub-assemblies and bootstrap testing rigs for them. This gave me so much good data to be able to dial in exactly the right angles and distances. Eventually, I managed to get the proportions just right for me and was able to produce an arm design that can print on a standard bed without any cuts and with maximum reach. But as I said, the arm wasn't the whole thing. So I had to model loads of other parts. Some were straightforward, while others required a lot of tweaking. You tweak, you iterate, but eventually you have to bite the bullet and start scaling towards the full version 1 assembly. I'm not gonna lie, this took a long time for me and my solo printer. And that's where services like PCBWay come to the rescue. If you have projects that need to scale without you going through the hassle of constantly monitoring and managing the printing, you can delegate that whole business to them. PCBWay also offer a bunch of other services to scratch your creative itch, like PCBs, PCBAs, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, that's interesting. Check them out, add the link in the description. After the wood arrived, I had to do a bit of processing to it. While I was maneuvering around it, it became clear it was flimsier than I expected, but this will have to do for now. Cutting the pipes was a little tedious. If I had to do this again, I'd probably get them sized correctly from the start or just have a bandsaw to achieve in five seconds what I accomplished in two hours. At the end of cutting, I realized each of my pipes had a sticker on it and this sticker would not go alcohol, water, nothing. I found online this silly idea to put cooking oil on them. And at this point I thought I might as well try anything and continue with the assembly. But there was friction all around. The pipes weren't quite equal to each other and the burr made them frustrating to get in correctly. All I wanted was a loose layout to better visualize how it all comes together. And instead I got hours of hopelessly looking at the work still ahead of me. Because I clearly needed it. Around this time I also got a reminder 
reminder that anything can be dangerous. Those pipes I cut earlier, turns out they have a razor sharp edge. To make things even worse, my blood started dripping on the carpet, yet another mess I had to jump and clean out. And then, as if the universe witnessed the bottom I was hitting, I was offered a small break. That damn oil trick actually worked. I have no idea why or how, but plain cooking oil did what boiling water, a scraper and 70% alcohol couldn't even touch. Okay, I thought, maybe this was my cue. Let's finish this up. Of course it was anything but smooth sailing. For example, when I placed this thing upright, it was super shaky, especially from the sides. After the usual existential doubt and Loki throwing the whole thing away, I actually hung a couple of clothes on it and realized, wow, it actually works great. I only needed to stiffen the frame. So another week and a couple of braces later, or more like a dozen braces later, since I was building this from zero with little knowledge, I was now on my way towards building a proper frame. And as soon as the first crossbeam came in, I just couldn't believe what a massive difference that made in terms of rigidity. So I thought, let's keep going. A few more evenings and mornings later, hours of assembly and tweaking things, reprinting, adjusting, measuring, moving, I give you the Naked Wardrobe version 1. This is Naked Wardrobe version 1, a modular system that you can customize to fit your space and style. It combines drying with storage to streamline the laundry routine and eliminate extra props, unnecessary steps, clothes transfers and deep wrinkles. It operates intuitively between two modes with one easy transition. The larger diameter metal tubes act like natural radiators for better drying. The cross section also relieves fabric stress, leaving clothes without any hard creases. And when drying is over, the angles and spaces ensure optimal storage without crashing clothes into each other. You can easily pick up individual items without disturbing the rest and as an extra bonus you always get a clear view of your options throughout the week. My standard configuration is six shelves with five layers each which is broadly the equivalent of one load of laundry. It takes about 24 hours to print on a standard machine and about 1.5 kilograms of filament. Honestly this may be my best invention this year. Yes, this doesn't replace traditional storage, but it does complement it very nicely. I still use drawers for medium-term storage and this for frequently used items that I grab at a glance. I also ended up adding some extensions to it. Of course, this design will not work with every single laundry routine, with all climates, with all living spaces. But for some people, like myself, it makes a massive difference to an otherwise annoying chore and sits very well as a piece of pure naked design. If you if you're interested in building your own, let me know. If there's enough interest for it, I'll polish everything up and post a community note on this channel to release the system. This is my first structural frame and it was truly challenging putting everything together but I actually had a blast and I do use it all the time. I hope sharing my journey gave you some ideas of your own and maybe moved you towards creative pursuits in your environment. I sincerely hope you'll stick around for my upcoming projects. Honestly, it would be genuinely helpful if you subscribed and liked this essay. I'm a really small channel and truly every review counts a lot. Speak soon in the comment section and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!